Welcome to the show. Let's get right into this. This is very, this is a very important show, and I don't want you guys missing out on this. Y'all have got, you need to understand. Going to school is very important. And if you don't go to school, and you're missing if you don't go to school, it's then, uh, then uh, you're violent, you're, you're violating the law, your parents are neglect, and And you're true, and your parents negligent. That's the rule here. But we're not here to talk about that. What we're here to talk about is this: if you fail your classes during the school year, one or two, one, two or more classes, you will be required to go to summer school. What is that? What is that? Well, of course, it's held during the school summer vacation. It's taken for remedial purposes as part of an academic program or for professional or personal purposes. It's a program sponsored by a school or school district or provided by a private company that provides lessons and activities during the summer vacation. Participation in summer schools has been shown to have substantial and beneficial effects on educational progress. But what we're here, this is what we're here to talk about. We're here to talk about summer school and how very important it is for, your, for you to go to summer school. No excuses. Let me tell you, it is like very important for you, for your child to go to summer school if they failed their classes. I went to summer school like two times during my years in school. Ninth, sixth grade. No, it was sixth grade. It was fifth grade, and during my junior year. Junior year was because I failed my U.S. history test, and. Uh, Fifth grade was just because of other issues. But during this pandemic, there are changes to summer school in the way for CCS and the school districts. The proof is the grade level feeling more than doubling from 1,800, from about 1,800 students to a normal year, around 4,000 during the 2020-21 school year. Some students were successful, but other students struggling and getting here, making sure they were engaged every single day. That's when the CCISD Title I director said. With so many students unusually in summer school who are advancing the next grade level, this year is spending that program in 12 to 20 days this year. It means more hours in the classroom, and district leaders hope parents will make sure their children are there every day. Strong intense is the key to the academic success. If you start strong and continue strong, you're going to have the tendency to finish strong. That part is much smaller than CCISD, and while they didn't provide exact figures, district leaders say they aren't making any changes to the digital summer school program. But, uh, other school districts like, uh, like, uh, Gregory Portland. They're extending normal 11 day to at least 13 days. But the additional is possible depending on how much retesting the student needs to do. So that's what I recommend you do. If you're if you're failing your grade or it's an option to take summer school, you can talk with your you can talk with your school principal and seeing if take going to summer school is an option. If you pay if you if you failed a grade, then chances are you're gonna be required to go to summer school. That's the same thing with tests. If you failed your test, you're going to have to retake it by going to summer school. There, you're going to have to sit there during the class like every time you need to sit, sit and do, do your math and English. And if, you, and if you pass, you pass the test, you're 
your like English or math test, then uh, you can move on to the next grade. If you don't, you're going to have to repeat the grade that you repeated. That's what the whole idea of summer school is. Just sitting there doing work. But the question is, what happens if you don't show up to summer school? If you skip summer school... The question from that is, you you wouldn't need to speak to your school di district directly. The main question would be, why wouldn't you go? Depending on the reason, the school would rather be equipped to help you. If your school communicated that you need to go because you failed the subject, they have several options. One might be to take the class again in conjunction with the current classes, or they might offer you another suggestion, but they'd be the ones to ask. Again, as a student, you need, you need to meet the curriculum requirements in order to graduate. But they can if you don't show nothing. Summer school is an advantage to your credits. I mean, just because I'm saying they won't do anything to you doesn't mean that doesn't mean that you don't have to go. Don't skip summer school. Just parents, you need to make sure that if your child fails a subject, they have to go to summer school every every day. If not. If they don't go to summer school, it's their choice. And if you want more information about that, you can talk. You can talk with your school district, and they'll get the provide you with the answers. Because let's face it, I'm not going to be sitting here looking at all these people. Skipping summer school. So it's unacceptable. You cannot be skipping your summer school, period. No excuses. No freaking excuse. Alright, coming up. Coming up, we're going to be giving you the very latest on the, uh, the drone of, uh, Andrew Bass, and then also what we're going to do is, we're also going to tell you about the flags, and and also More about the summer in the classroom when we return. Before we continue on the next topic, if you live in the CCISD area, there are 4,000 K students taking summer school this year. All right. Now to the latest on the uh, on Andrew Bass. And now they're preparing for his funeral. But the man, here's what we know so far. The medical examiner's office confirmed that the body of the swimmer was found on yesterday in Andrew Bass. It was the brother, but when later when they pulled out to find him, it was Andrew Bass. It was all thanks to the rescue to that person who rescued him. Okay. Now, if you went to the Cal and Pepper Rally yesterday or the day before, you may have noticed there was a skit involved from Cal Allen.
and there was a there was it was on TikTok. And there were several people that made statements from the school saying, in this skit, the student Joseph Salinas III says he has no regrets about the incident. He also believes he wouldn't be an issue for former President Donald Trump was so divisive. The moment they looked like a show during the skit featuring a student dressed as Donald Trump, another student dressed as Jesus declared for the Republican Party. In a skit, in that skit, Salinas asked Trump, just a building a wall around Slow Spin with high school accounts rival. He says it was a part of a school tradition. It was called Senior Dress Up Day. We dress up as what we want. We get a skit. It gets approved just like mine. We all got approved. It didn't include a parents from Jesus. He says in the moment was ad libbed. Told me I shout him out. I shouted him out. He came out and now did it was spontaneous. It was great. It was spontaneous but went viral on social media. Comments across the country and committed to calling it racist. He says it but it says it wasn't racist and thinks he knows why there was so much controversy. A previous version of the story cited Salinas as saying the teacher who approved his script has been forced to retire. Early Wednesday I left a message saying that no teacher counts were retired or someone has to retire. Or whether because of that unfortunate skit took place. So here's what we're hearing. We're hearing from the student who said he was forced to retire and the superintendent saying no one was forced to retire. Who was the teacher that approved of the script? But still, we don't know this is under investigation, but next year, if you're going to make a skit for this pep rally, you need to make sure that it is school, school appropriate. Really, school appropriate. This, thing, this isn't freedom of speech. This isn't the First Amendment. There are, and he, if this was taken before the Supreme Court, they would side with the school saying they have a limit on free speech. That's my take on this. That's what I have to say on this, and if you're not going to accept that, then that's your problem. If you take this to the court, then the school will sign with them and and worse things can happen. Alright, still ahead, what you need to know about the flags before you head off to the beach. That's in a moment. And a man gets arrested for breaking for breaking and entering into the school. All that's next. All right, a few couple, a few days ago, yesterday, a Corpus Christi Independent School District police responded to a burglary report outside of Cafe Middle School around 1:48 a.m. on Wednesday after several alarms went off. But according to the arrest report, CCPSD police dispatch was able to locate a man on camera carrying bags as he entered several classrooms. Those bags contained laptops. Police said during the check of the school, they found Isaiah Rivera, 17, in the library. It was on a gunpoint and taken into custody. Police said they recovered three handbags that contained laptops belonging to the CCISD school. CCISD. He appeared before Manscaped Judge Melissa Madrigal Thursday morning. He's charged with burglary for building. What does that mean? Burglary for building. It should have been breaking and entering. If the building is in Habitation and its conviction for burglary is punished by felony of the second degree with a maximum possible fine under Texas state law of up to $10,000 and prison time of up to two years unless the enhancement below applies. That's the law. Penal Code 30.030.02. That's from the Texas Penal Code. If any party of the offense, whether you or someone else commits or tries to commit a felony other than theft, then the conviction for burglary of habitation is punished by a felony of first degree with the maximum possibility 
Best possible fine and text deal at ten thousand dollars. And up to life in prison. So in this case, if he did it for like the first time, he would be sentenced to two years in jail and a ten thousand dollar fine. That's the first degree. Second degree, twenty years in prison, third time. You would be char you would be you would be you would be locked in prison since this was his first time. My guessing is he would spend two years in jail. That's my understanding. It's what the law wants. Hurricane season is coming up in a few days, and it's time for you guys to be prepared. You need to make sure that your windows are boarded up. You need to have an evacuation plan. You need to make sure that you know what you're doing. You need you gotta make sure. So you need to make sure your your windows are boarded up. You need to make sure you got plastic trash bags. You also need to make sure that you had, uh, you have an evacuation plan. Flashlights, generators. Basically, you need to come up with a plan to help save your housing and life during this hurricane season. The best time to prepare is right now. So if I were you, I would prepare. Come up with a plan. Have a hurricane drill. Have a hurricane drill like once a month so y'all can, uh, can understand this. Y'all can understand, oh, this is what we're supposed to do. And, try to understand that safety is very, very important. Alright, now the world day coming up. Time for the some time for our safety break. This time it's all about the click it or ticket. Seatbelt safety. It is required by Texas law to be wearing your seatbelts. And if you don't wear your seatbelt, So yeah, basically what you guys have to understand is that seatbelts is required by law. So yeah, basically it's the law. If you don't wear your seatbelt, You are going to get yourself into a lot of trouble. And in the state of Texas, the law requires everyone in a vehicle to buckle up or face fines and court costs of $220. Maybe not 20 dollars maybe not 200 dollars Children younger than eight years must be a, must be in a child seat to reduce their seat unless they are taller than four feet nine inches. If they aren't properly restrained, the driver faces to fine up to two hundred fifty dollars plus plus court costs. So yeah, it is the law. And if you don't, and if you click it, you're okay. If you and if you don't, and you the you have to take it. That's the that's the whole purpose of clicking a ticket. You don't if you click if you don't click it or ticket. If you don't wear your seatbelt, you will be going to jail. You know you will be fined. That's the law.
That's the law? That's the law. You can't argue with the law here, nor with the police. They'll tell you, hey, you can't be doing that. Because that's just unacceptable behavior. You're sitting there saying, hey, this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to wear my seatbelt. Just try to understand. Seatbelts seat are work purposely made for safety purposes. That's the whole point in our seatbelts. I'll be right back with flags to help you understand about the beach. Time to talk to you guys about the beach flag warning system. What the colors mean. If it's green, no dangerous conditions. Yellow, there's a moderate risk. Red, dangerous conditions. If it's purple, venomous green lake like jellyfish. And if it's orange, environmental risks. And it would help learn, help you learn about riptides before you start heading out to the water. If it's if it's on the on these four, you need to, the water has to be like above, at, at your waist. If you go go far above the waist, like to the to your chest here, you're you need to step back a bit. And it's time for you to educate so about the reptiles. So there's more to come about this. We'll have this link on our uh, on the description below, and as well on the website at jcarmen67.wixsite.com slash give me a break. From here, you can look up you can look at this map, type in your type in your your zip code. And it will it will show you. Just click on what you want and then it'll show you the tides. So let's understand here. We all need to make sure that we educate people about riptides. First Josiah Smith, now Andrew Bass. We educate, we can all be safe. So it's part of our safety break coming up on Friday, which is all about riptides. Riptide education. I'm going to educate you about riptides and what you need to know. And giving you the very latest on those riptides. That's all for this edition of Game Break Thursday. We'll see you again for Game Break Friday. Have a good night, everyone. Take care of yourself and each other.